Hello everyone and welcome to another video covering the AQA GCSE uh, specification. Moving on to topic number 9 today and that is the CPU. So first let's have a look at what the CPU is. So CPU stands for Central Processing Unit and it is the hardware within the computer that carries out the instructions of the applications on the computer. Um, so its purpose is to process data and carry out instructions using the processor in it. So the central processing unit isn't just a processor, it has got a processor in it obviously, um, but it does contain some memory, um, so it's not um, so there's a processor within the central processing unit, which makes sense if you think about the name, um, but it gets sort of a common misconception. So the spec requires you to um, know how things are linked. Unfortunately, it's very vague, so I've got no real way of working out how detailed it expects you to know it, because this could be very simple, just a, just a general overview. It could be an in-depth um, uh, description. So I'm just using my common sense here. Um, so everything's linked to the processor through the motherboard. Um, the brain is like so. The CPU is more like the brain of a human, and the motherboard is more like the nervous system. And by the way, we looked at hardware in the last video, including the motherboard. So if you, if you're a bit confused, um, so the RAM and the cache are linked to the processor through a bus, and a bus is a communication system, and um, that transfers data. So the cache, we'll look at in a sec what that is because it may be an unfamiliar term to you. Um, so you can see in the diagram here that we've got. Um, We've got um, the CPU obviously here, and then it's linked through an FSB, which is called stands for a uh, a front side bus. So that's the type of bus in the motherboard, just um, to differentiate it. And it's connected to the RAM and the rest of the computer, including the cache. Um, so again that's using my common sense whether I think you need to know that maybe you don't but still it's a bit of knowledge for you um, you also got so you can see a diagram here uh, taken from howstuffworks.com a very good website you can see the CPU is connected through this would be a bus here to the cache to the RAM so in a slightly different order here I, I assume it varies motherboard to motherboard which isn't actually a subject I'm too um, familiar with unfortunately and then we've got virtual memory and disk storage which we'll actually look at in a sec but this is actually what a um, a uh, CPU looks like usually it has a giant heat sink on it if you look at a motherboard in an actual computer because it has to be cooled down um, so um, yeah let, let's move on let's have a look at um, performance of a CPU so we've got to look at um, a few um, a few attributes of a CPU that affect its performance so there's a lot of information on this slide so I'm going to do my best I'm going to highlight the bits you, the key bits obviously you need to know all of this but um, I'm just going to highlight the key bits so clock speed um, it's often um, referred to as clock rate as well you may see that um, written um, it's the speed at which a microprocessor which all, all that means is contained on one chip which all modern processors are um, so clock rate is the speed at which which a microprocessor executes instructions and processes data. So a higher clock speed means a process will com be completed quicker. So that's very important to realize. A higher clock speed means that any given process will be completed quicker. However, there's, uh, there's obviously a downside to this, it always is. Um, an increased clock speed means increased heat produced, so more heat is produced by a processor and therefore more power consumed. So you have to have maybe a larger fan and you've got to be prepared to um, give up more power for a higher clock speed. Right, also need to know about the number of cores. So a computer can have, have multiple CPUs. Um, and when you have multiple CPUs on a single chip, as a microprocessor, they are called multi-core processors. So that's what a multi-core processor is. Oops. <clears throat> that's what a multi-core processor is. It's um. Oh. What am I doing? I've lost my highlighter. Brilliant. Okay, so a multi-core processor, like we say, is is when there are multiple CPUs on one chip. Pretty simple. Um. So multiple cores can run multiple instructions at any given time so that's also important to realize that they can run different instructions at any given time so that um, one core could be doing one thing and the other core could be doing another thing which is which is effective when you're doing two things at once so for example you could be rendering a video and 
um, watching a YouTube video or something like that. So they're good when you are multitasking. However, software must be specifically written to cater for them. Um, that means that for example, if you're doing one very high-end process, maybe um, you're doing something involving 3D shapes or you're playing a very high-end game, um, you can use multiple cores on the same thing, but the software must be written to cater for this. So they, the software must be, um, it must acknowledge that it, it must be able to be used with multiple cores. And if it if it isn't written like this, then there won't be an increase of speed. So that is important. That's an important thing to add. Um, in the spec paper, there was a question um, uh, outlining two. It was, it was a description of two different computers. One had multiple cores and one had a high clock speed. And you had to um, do a um, evaluation of them. And so you'd be talking about stuff like uh, the things I've highlighted effectively. I was going to talk about cash. So um, it's, it's important to uh, realise that this is pronounced cash. Not cache, not uh, catch. So it's cash. Uh, when I first learned this, I called it cache for about like I don't know, a couple of months, and it I, I, no one told me that I was wrong, and so it's a bit embarrassing. So make sure you call it cache. Um, so cache stores recently used data, so that it can be quickly accessed at a later time. So it stores recently used data, so it can be quick. So this is very important. It can be quickly accessed at a later time. Cache is very very fast. Um, memory to access so anything stored in the cache can be accessed very quickly and um, all the cache means is basically just a store and this is a form of memory cache so there is a type of cache called the sort of processor so I mentioned that in the CPU there's memory stored and that is cache so the small data stores which contain regularly used instructions that can be accessed quickly by the CPU so there are some instructions in the computer that are repeated often, and they would be st they would be stored in the in the CPU cache, and um, it means that the CPU can access them very quickly when required. Um, when the CPU finds stored data in the cache, it's called a cache a, a cache hit. So um, whenever whenever the CPU requires some uh, requires data, it checks in the cache first, and if it's there, it gets a cache hit. So the more cache there is, the more data is in the cache. So there's a higher chance um so a higher chance of a cache hit so the process will operate quicker um so a, lar a large amount of cache in the process is a good thing so increased cache means that it will operate quicker and there are different levels of cache which i don't think you need to know um they, ba they basically are to do with how near they are to the processor so i believe that is it for today's video uh, thanks a lot for watching uh, maybe watch it more than once if it's a bit confusing and um, make sure you check out the next one all right, bye.